So understanding the agro ecosystem, we say that Are you listening, both of you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we say that understanding the agro ecosystem are simpler than the natural agro ecosystems. They contain less diversity of animal and plant species. In the agricultural ecosystem, is that it is an actively manipulated by the man, but the more susceptible to pest damage and the outbreaks. So pesticides kill pests as well as their natural enemies. This is the problem with these pesticides. So in the absence of natural enemies, resistant to pests reach outbreak levels and um, secondary pests also become major pests as their natural enemies are also killed by the broad spectrum of pesticides. So in this ecosystem, we are like a uh, food chain. One is dependent on the other and other is dependent on the other. We have studied about the food chain. So even using these pesticides, that food chain becomes a break where due to the control of one natural enemy, it gives the chance of the other enemy to become uh, more in number because of the first one affected due to this pesticide. So sometimes secondary pests also become a major pest as the natural enemy for us because of the uh, first uh, level uh, resistant to the pest. When we kill the first level pest, pest due to the this pesticide usage, so that is an one uh, understanding the agro ecosystem is the major one, major one why we should go for the IPM methods. Next, planning the agro ecosystem includes in the pest management uh, pest problems must be anticipated and avoided through judicious planning. Like we know that marigold uh, crop will initiate the development of the nematodes in the uh, earth due to the, after removing the plants, if they are remained in the uh, soil, the roots, if they remain in the soil, it, you, it is very effective to the soil in controlling the lot of pests in the soil. The marigold works like that. So if we have a proper planning, we can use a crop variety should not be grown. If it is known to be highly susceptible, but multiple cropping with a crop should not be practiced as it ensures Continuous means uh, without using any pesticides or any fat, means other chemicals. Ah, like reducing. <laughs> we are not saying that totally we cannot. Um, some precautions of IPM works. Like, for example, uh, if you take foam granites, they have developed uh, such a wax to introduce to the foam granites. In the um, first stage of development only, they will make these bags to that fruit, uh, introduce these bags to that fruit so that the pests will not visit and it is a stretchable one. As the fruit grow, it is also stretches inside that bag and also um, no pest can attack that particular fruit in future till it is get harvested. Um, and uh, like that, so many uh, usages with that bag, introducing that bag to that particular fruits in a first stage of level only. It is little bit uh, uh, 
it is not easy to hard work in the employee but if once if we take the pain of introducing them to that we can be uh, feel very uh, safe until it is getting harvested so that is one ipm method like um it is uh, in whatever the pest which is going to be attacked to the fruit is safe now we have to look after the branches and leaves and uh, any other one which is affecting the uh, root or like that we should take other things to be considered one is safe like what is that um, fruit is safe okay fruit we don't have to use any pesticide or like that but like that we can reduce the cost effect and also the we may say organic organ not totally organic but these methods are like that uh, like uh, uh, cost benefit and uh, so uh, when we discuss all the things you will come to know like how effective it will be ipm okay, fine ma'am thank you so, mixed cropping and intercropping both will be useful and uh, we can reduce the uh, pesticide application to the minimum of 25% level avoiding the 75% so planning should be there for this agro ecosystem and multi cropping or inter cropping whatever we are seeing like mixed cropping in the pick so anything we can be uh, utilized to reduce the pest problem that is the one method for many uh, of them in the agricultural university they have done the research work and they said that this two if they have been grown together uh, we can reduce the pest problem to the 75% to 80% so only 20% problem it's not an um, that risk to uh, use uh, any other some organic way of neem sprays or like that so like this we are planning for the ipm methods and uh, next uh, thing is cost benefit and benefit risk like the here cost benefit refers to monetary benefit due to the pest control efforts whatever we are taking we are introducing however pesticide use should not be indiscriminate both economic benefit and environment safety are thus essential and therefore such pesticides be used which do not harm the natural enemies honey bees such pesticide be used which do not harm the nat uh, earthworms and other wildlife these should not leave harmful residue on crop produced at the time of their harvest or their consumption preference that should be given to the bio pesticides like neem and beta npv etc so we are saying that if 80% uh, is reduced the risk of pest due to this uh, intercropping or mixed cropping or any other way then whatever the 20% pest problem is there that can also be controlled with the bio pesticides bio pesticides in the sense we use neem lime um any other which is organic method way of controlling the pest so here comes the tolerance one should not panic by seeing a few pests on the crop if if we are want to 20% uh, damage can be we are when we are using neem or uh, lime or any other thing some pests will be there which are uh, like uh, common we should not be panic seeing that uh, some foliage loss without any appreciable reduction in the crop yield so that doesn't affect the lot of uh, crop yield so economic threshold should be established for different pests and crop should then be regularly 
monitor to detect whether the pest has reached the damage threshold or if it has reached only then pesticide be applied so one or two insects are been seen on the crop and it doesn't affect the much of the yield then there is no need to introduce the pesticide we should first study and then only if it is a big loss or damage to the crop then only we should go for a pesticide that is the one thing next thing is that leaving the pest residue so whatever we are consuming today in the, in the in today's life everything is with the residue on the top we have to use the salt water to wash all the vegetables and fruits why because to remove that residue on the fruits and the vegetables so ipm less stress on reducing the pest population below the economic threshold level and not on complete annihilation of the pests because some pest population of natural enemies of pests so survival of natural enemies of pests which are important for their suppression and natural enemies are killed by different insects natural enemies are killed by direct con contact with the broad spectrum pesticides and also died due to the starvation so efforts they should be made to conserve the natural energy population so this is a one more type of method next one is proper timing of treatments that this plays a major important role like when we say that proper timing means um for uh, pesticide application also if it requires to control that pest then only by knowing all other uh, any side effects or like that without knowledge we should not use any pesticide so proper timing is very essential how we feed the baby like that we should be using for the crop also the pesticides next one is public understanding and acceptance so public understanding and acceptance means the one who are uh, not uh, studied up to the pg level or degree level they only go for the farming so to make them to understand with their practices how important is this ipm program we should make the awareness on behalf of this particular ones and uh, this several ipm program have been developed but the public acceptance has been very low till now so major reason for the has been found to be a absence of multiplest management multiple uh, multipass sorry multi pest management programs and most of ipm programs address single of a couple of pests so while this while the farmers and the holistic solutions to their pest problems ipm program should be developed in consultation with the farming community and uh, there should be of improved based on their feedback so sometimes what happens even though we do the research work in the labs we are working on the mixed cropping or intercropping or any other cropping the knowledge should be in an uh, applicability way 
so the farmers who are working in the fields have more knowledge about how to control the pests so the youngsters should not go for a short method of uh, introducing them so it should be of great experience the knowledgeable person can be uh, the more uh, accepting to this particular methods like that so uh, these are the different types of uh, ipm programs what we can write in the exam coming to our book we have to see about the definition three to five lines definition you should underline coming to the aims as it is how many aims are there you can plan and write it do you have assignment question for this ipf they are given no ma'am no okay. uh, usually we give because it's an important question for uh, the essay and uh, also in the short so never leave this question to prepare please send in uh, group ma'am this pdf ah i send and sir uh, you should be aware of what are the um, methods and what are the government following One minute. I have to open the menu of video. So, um,
so when we talk about the requirements for this uh, ipm the last the usage of this chemical pesticides can impact the human health and the ecosystems example the ddt a pesticides can accumulate in the fatty tissue of animals and affect the bird reproduction insects can become resistant to chemical pesticides approximately 500 species of insects are resistant to one or more pesticides and uh, due to the exclusions it leads to transmit a large number of plant diseases worldwide so among the other diseases we see a lot of uh, things the what is happening in the crops so when we say of uh, the american ipm system design the main these levels also like the acceptable pest levels should be maintained preventive cultural practices and monitoring monitoring helps a lot in pest uh, multiplication we can in the beginning only if we get them and burn it or something we do it they cannot be affect the so mechanical controls biological controls monitoring responsible pesticides use so talking about the definition and this diagram shows that ipm may be of biological chemical cultural and the physical activity so how does ipm work means the mechanical control achieved through the eradication and the quarantine also help plays an important vital role in this and it is a legal restriction on the movement of agricultural commodities so other methods that are used for eradication purpose like we follow the crop rotation intercropping like that so here we say that uh, already discussed the um, uh, crop rotation field sanitation chemical and the heat treatments without uh, much damage to the environment eradication of alternative host so eradication of alternative uh, so uh, the uh small scale eradication can be uh, um, tracks to the control of various diseases like most of the diseases will be wheat barley sugarcane what are the commodities in general we use so so these can be controlled by using some of the ipm methods like one more uh, thing which we grew in the lab for the pest control is trichogamma trichogamma is also a one uh, small mmn size insect which will eat away the pest eggs if any pest lays eggs on the so we are coming to the um, first one is uh, this one biological control so usually we take the resistant varieties 
but the the methods will be of uh, monogenic on the polygenic way is not at all now. Sometimes even pheromones also play an important role. Like Pheromones can be utilized to catch the or detect the insects. Pheromones are attracted by the males. And uh, these pheromones are chemical limited by an animal, but signals another animal of the same species. So it happens, sometimes it happens. So pheromones also play the important role. So pheromones can be utilized to catch or detect the insects. Pheromones are chemicals emitted by an animal that signals another animal. On female gypsy moth, we are shown as an example. But we'll take another one. So when we take the disadvantages of IPM, integrated pest management are extremely complex and uh, require a high level of understanding, higher level of understanding to utilize. So as we all know, the educated person will be having a less person, less percentage, So in the, this IPM system, pest control involves a lot, lot more time. And uh, I said, no, each and every fruit should be, um, we, are, we should uh, introduce each and every fruit at the first level of stage only, we introduce the bag to them so that no pest can attack with this particular IPM method to the fruit and fruit is safe as such and no residue of pesticides or any other thing because this bag itself contains some um, biocontrol agent reagent it is made up of and it is stretchable. So in order for an IPM to work effectively, it needs constant monitoring also, the natural enemies of pests used in some IPMs can later become the pests themselves. Like what we have, what I said is one uh, species of pest that is Tygogamma. It is a small mm in size insect which is grown grown in the labs. And this particular insect, when we release them on for example, yeah, on the sorghum crop, what happens means it eats away the larvae of the pests on the leaves or stems or any other, wherever it finds. So in that way, this particular biological control method, part of the biological control method, we are using trichogamma fly, and this fly, when it is introduced and released into the crop, eats away the larval uh, eggs of the pest. 
then the question arises that after eating away the larval eggs means one or two days after what is the feed for that particular insect Wait, I'm placing the screen. Just closing my eyes. Did you heard about the G group? Genetically modified crops, organisms. Ah. Screen. So, so in this genetically modified crops, GM crops we will call. What is uh, like? Uh, did you heard about any advantages and disadvantages? They come under the transgenic plants. It is there in your syllabus, like two twenty eight page. Two twenty eight page. What is a transgenic plant? Like it also, we are discussing under the IPM, like uh, um, the host resistant plants, we have seen the <laughs> many other uh, levels of measures we took for the IPM control. So this is uh, one more uh, topic in the genetic uh, limitations level. So, in the genetic limitations level, when we talk about the resistance, it is um, sometimes unacceptable, sometimes acceptable. And um, uh, what we have seen in the GM crops is uh, once it has been uh, giving the more yield to the farmer, continuously one or uh, two harvest. After that, the soil is becoming useless. So it is affecting the soil, which is an, one of the main, um, uh, soil is the main uh, thing for the farmer. That is getting affected due to this GM crops genetically modified crops. So 
nutrients uh, also will uh, less uh, coming low level no? nutrients will be come now uh, available uh, of nutrients okay. present in the soil uh, only we we'll useful uh, useful uh, microorganisms will also can die due to uh, uh. Sometimes it may die due to the toxic uh, so mm. just released by the GM crops, GM uh, crops, seeds. Main. Uh, uh, main. Like first when they have been introduced, we were very happy that okay, without uh, using any pesticides, uh, we got a uh, nice uh, varieties uh, without any pesticide usage we can grow them but uh, later second uh, crop or third crop it will uh, uh, we came to know that this method of genetic limitations uh, we will talk about this ipm you know in the ipm methods it is not that beneficial to the farmer so um, we can say that some bacteria or produce peptide toxins that can bind to the specific receptors in the intestine of insects, cause lysis of the cells leading to the death of the insect. So uh, even they have produced the bacteria, uh, which has been uh, lysing the, affecting the gut of the insect to reduce the pest population. But as such, what we have seen in the uh, the effective um, on this particular insects, other uh, like when we use it on some type of uh, some order of insect to control, it is affecting the all other orders of the insects also. Like for example, um, when we take the Lepidoptera butterflies, Diptera means uh, um, hymenoptera means honeybees. Like this, so many orders of insects are there. When we are using on one particular type of insect, it is also getting affected to the all other orders of the insects also. So it is um, uh, not um, acceptable further uh, as such to nowadays scenario, so we are not accepting. So we have like that many examples like maize plants. Um, uh, next, uh, cotton ball worm to detox this particular species also. Heliotis, cotton ball worm. Also, they have uh, developed the some genetic engineered insect resistant crop variety. Uh, and this has been till uh, today. We have BT corn or BT cotton varieties, uh, BT potatoes, uh, whatever has been developed by the US in 2001, um, like So till now we are saying that it is not that uh, effective or uh, acceptable to overcome the problem of uh, usage of the pesticides. So once you can uh, go through this particular uh, pages, 228 and 229 in your books, you will understand that um, it's a lot of things have been given here, but we should take um, two to three examples as a study and how come we are unable to accept to that particular uh, genetically engineered crops. It has been introduced in the soya bean, canola, corn, potato, everywhere, but we are Matter. unable to. Uh, rice, uh, golden rice and uh, flavors flavor tomato. Uh, examples. So some advantages have been given here, 
but as such the potential uh, of production in the pesticide and all that been to told as an advantages but as such we say that it uh, has a more disadvantages and uh, drawbacks for this technology and what we have discussed today so that also we can write in the page number 230 it has been given like expense and expertise uh, is required for utilizing this particular crops uh, the safety of engineered plants and microorganisms usage is still being debated means we are not coming to one such um, draw, one such uh, um, level to that uh, no we cannot like that we are not staying to that particular thing because of some uh, deliberations like uh, we have some doubts regarding that even in the um, pest can develop the resistance to engineer the plants so even if they have been demonstrated in the laboratories and all that but uh, as we have talked today about that particular uh, spray applications the harvest is more but uh, the soil is getting affected so this has been till now we are in dilemma and uh, as such it is um, manipulation in the sowing time and uh, pest damage creating a sort of asynchrony and uh, uh, plant density, high seed rate. Sometimes the seed availability is more. Um, sometimes what happens means situations arise where the pest totally kills the plant in very early stages of its growth. And the pest does not attack the advanced stages of the crop. In the early stages of the crop only it is being affected. So the seed rate doubled and the shoot fly infested plants are removed so as to maintain the optimum plant population. Like this also many plants get damaged when the crop is sown. So, uh, it has been like many problems arise like this and the fertilizer management is also one of the major thing in maintaining this G crops and uh, water management and the drainage is also requires a lot of uh, um, technology to, to manage this particular crops and the best what we have been uh, come to the solution is one is an intercropping um, and the crop rotation. And uh, this has been uh, important uh, to keep the soil um, nutrients uh, available to the one crop to the another crop from the soil. The nutrients utilization will be minimal because one crop is sown means it requires a maximum number of uh, nutrients to that particular crop. Then the other nutrients will be available in the soil. Then the next crop what we will grow should be of that nutrients utilized. We should see that that uh, nutrients can be utilized. So like this, what happens means crop rotation is done with the soil will be preserved with all the nutrients and uh, soil will also be able to um, get back its original nutrients in this way of rotation so weeds must be removed now uh, weeds uh, that is also and uh, trash mulching is and one more thing which we can 
um, recommend to reduce the infestation in the shoot like uh, any time if any thing is been uh, moth lay the eggs on the lower part of the cane uh, uh, or thing them will be more useful instead of removing them because the nutrients will be available to the soil if that is been uh, dumped there only in the soil so like that many of the things has been given here uh, one of them is a trap cropping uh, seed treatments all these intercropping crop rotation all these we can study overall and underline them like which one are very much acceptable to write and uh, easy to pick for this particular thing to write uh, all of them can be we can go through it and underline them and write it for the ipm methods so it can be given for the five marks or it can be given for the essay uh, you can cut short if it is given in the five marks you can write as many as uh, things what we discussed today uh, i will send the pdf so you can write about that particular things as a main uh, criteria for the to write the ipm so it is an important question integrated pest management advantages disadvantages aim and uh, what is the impact on the environment and uh, what is the situation present scenario regarding this particular usage of methods and the next thing what we can uh, Uh, here um, we have an uh, overall summary about the achievements in the ipm in the 248 page that also if you read once like what we are able to get through it this particular uh, ipm achievements is given that also you can go through and write some point about this national center for insect pest management and uh, in the page number 251 also the summary is given like what are the curative methods and mechanical control methods what we are seeing to destroy the eggs larvae and pupae by screens and barriers and the repellent chemicals baits trapping devices all that we can be seen using till now we can discuss you can write in the exam coming to the next topic is important one about the silk worm 279 half an hour i'll take this one okay no one is there okay ma'am ha ah. okay then i will 
go through the first type of uh, unit 9 silkworm this silkworm uh, is of one particular uh, chinese first it has been found in the china when one of the queen of china is sitting under the tree she was sipping a coffee so suddenly one round ball like thing fell into the coffee then she when she want to take it out from the coffee it has been releasing thread like structures so then she thought of it's a uh, nice uh, thread like structure so then they this particular chain is has been introduced how to make the particular uh, cocoons we call them usually so how to take out the silk from them and use as an to weave the clothes so first it happened to be uh, in china like 2200 bc then coming to the our country india we also has been started producing the silk learning the technology from them and uh, here we see in the silk worms like uh, silk worms are of seven different types like mulberry which is which mulberry silk worms eat mulberry leaves only and uh, the scientific name of that particular mulberry silk worms is bombyx mori and iri silk worms they eat the castor leaves some iri will be found on some castor plants and all that some iri we can be rearing using the castor leaves amdam okay amdam dels kada yes ma'am ah then uh, uh, tasser means it is only found in the wild means these tribal people they will go to the forest and uh, on some tsum and soalu trees we will find these wild cocoons they will collect them thus are the tasser silk worms tasser cocoons they will collect the tasser cocoons what is a cocoon means cocoon is a one type of uh, thread bound oval shaped structure where that cocoon is boiled in the water when it is boiled in the water it leaves the threads so that threads can be reeled into a, a reel like structure you see the patang how we will do the patang uh, when we fly the patangs kites how we will reel the thread like that from the cocoons they will reel the thread to this particular ones and then it can be used to for the making the sarees and the cloth so that is a cocoon uh, you see the video to know about this particular thing or otherwise i will give you the i'll send you one video regarding how to that stage of thing will undergo the process if i have i can show it now like here i get to that particular a video i don't know wait and so um as such so japan is tasser indian tasser they are different types of trees where the silk worms eat and ooze out the silk from their mouth and form the cocoons 
So Muga will be eating the soam and soalu leaves. And uh, Japanese tusser will be found on the oak trees. In the India also, we see some of the tusser silk will be grown on the oak trees in the wild. So there are four stages in the silk worm. Like how you have uh, earlier studied about the butterfly egg. Um, Egg, you see the page number 280, egg, larva, pupa, and the moth. So these eggs are very smaller in size. They will lay these two male and female copulate. And uh, these females will lay the eggs on the cards. Cards means sheets. So these sheets, when we culture the mulberry silkworms, I'm telling you. One mulberry silkworm rearing video, you see, you will understand everything. Mulberry silkworm video, where this mulberry silkworms, male and female copulate, male will die, female will be laying eggs on the cards. And it will also die. Two to three days is the lifespan after laying the egg. So that egg cards, egg cards we will say. We will take and incubate them in the mulberry leaves. After the incubation of 14 days, 13 to 14 days, the ant-like caterpillar structures come out of the small estates, which are mm in size. So after that comes out, they'll undergo the five instars. Five instars. Ah, here you can see page number 282. If you have a book in front of you, you can see that particular diagram. All of you having? No? Yes, ma'am. You have it? Yeah. Combat Morima, lifestyle, life history. Ah, life history. So here they undergo the hibernation process, like nine to twelve days. Then the egg hatch out a small ant-like structures. Those small ant-like structures will grow day by day. Molting process takes place, and like that. One to four days, three days, two to three days, two to four days. Taking some time, they'll grow, grow, grow by eating the mulberry leaves. Okay? That leaves also, they'll place in the trays and they'll introduce these ant-like structures into that mulberry. Then they'll be continuously eating for 24 hours without any break. Up to the 15 star, they'll be on that mission only, to eat, mission to eat. That's all. Then after the 15 star, they'll stop taking the food. Okay? They'll stop taking the food from the 15 star onwards. They will start oozing out the silk. And that oozing out the silk is nothing but what we wear as in cupboards. So here in this diagram, you will get a total idea of how they'll undergo the five instars. First instar, second instar, third, fourth, and fifth. So after reaching the fifth instar, they stop taking the food. Now their mission is to eject out the silk. So uh, how after we know that they have gone to the fifth malt means? They stop taking the food 
and they will move on to the corners from the leaf actually they should be on the leaf and they will be eating away the leaf but once they stop feeding they will move on to the corners they want to climb somewhere like that they feel restless in the leaf so those worms they'll pick up and keep it on the mounting tray so that on the tray uh, about 5 to 6 days they'll be oozing out the silk continuously and form the cocoon and these cocoons are uh, collected and boiled in the waters and they'll make the thread which is woven as a silk sari so here we can see in the diagram also they'll keep that uh, warm to on the mounting to use out the silk and form a cocoon so when we are doing this it is happening that inside the once before it breaks out we are boiling them and taking out the silk <coughs> if we don't boil them after the 10 to 12 days it breaks that cocoon and comes out which is of no use once it breaks the cocoon it is of no use if it is in tight work then only they can be utilized in the so here also in the picture 282 you can see the male and female female when we open cut open this cocoons also we can observe female as a broader one and uh, male as a thinner in size thin in size abdomen so that is the way to identify the male and female if we open 10 10 of them then we can see the pupa stage like this the pupal stage is the identification for the uh, male and female once it breaks out the moth comes out and those moths when they uh, copulate together they will lay there and the cycle continues and uh, where it has been not okay ah uh, one more thing we have to discuss here is when we have kept on the mounting they will lose out the silk continuously the way what we have feed them according to that they will lose out the silk we have given the nice feed they will lose out the nice silk so health is very important for them to maintain hygienic conditions and over the woolen uh, sorry the thread which has been got from that particular cocoons also will be in good condition this is a one way of uh, describing the life cycle of uh, silk worm first if you learn the life history diagram <laughs> five instars egg <laughs> hatching into ants <coughs> mounting if it is mounted well then it undergoes the nice developed pupa inside when it breaks out then adult moth will come out and nowadays some people if you boil the cocoon the inside the pupa is getting boil means it is an himsa silk because we are boiling the worm inside the cocoon and getting the silk so some people are uh, again as this 
particular killing then there is a method introduced into this particular ways ahimsa silk how we can get the ahimsa silk means we will not um, totally as it is will boil them we will cut open that particular part so that it can come out like that other must when after the hello domestication mouse world means quality all this is no need you just learn the life cycle of uh, silkworm and uh, the stages uh, what it is given for the stages you can avoid this is it clear any doubts regarding this particular uh, silkworm or ipm you can ask only 10 minutes left over akilesh and the and the diseases of uh, silkworm is uh, there protozoan diseases all viral bacterial you can read them do you want me to discuss them actually the main important part is life cycle and how we get the silk given the assignment right you wrote in the assignment this given in 10 marks ha uh, what what it is given diseases diseases of silkworm write a detail about the diseases of silkworm okay and i will but as such to my knowledge that is uh, we can discuss in the next class because the silkworm rearing is also there Raising, raising, raising all that is also there. We can discuss some. Uh, some I will tick one or two, which is very important. Whether, whether the here um, some diagrams also they have given. Ma, uh, it is essential for to draw diagrams of this. Is. Which one? In the diseases of silkworm. Yeah. Okay. okay. You can draw. You can draw uh, because uh, this is there in the that no no. But as such, if it is an uh, affected by the bacteria, they will shrink. Okay. Bacterial diseases. We have to draw the silkworm as a shrink and way. some like uh, viral diseases they will be stout 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 way whether uh, can we cannot uh, draw actually some um, is very it is uh, able to draw from this right you can check even in the um, net also for clear clear diagrams okay sometimes you will sometimes not they will be there nicely in the net for plachery uh, affected people are available i discuss 
one 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 or two two from each so first control also have given symptoms and control uh, you are saying that it is given in the that one no? like assignment only that word that part is given no other life history or like that no but not given not given. But a, a honeybee also one question has came from honeybee. Honeybee. Okay, honeybee I even get. Okay, next time uh -huh. I will continue with this. And a honeybee. Um, I have given that. That also will come. So the because social behavior of honeybee. Easy, easy to learn and uh, without any much. Uh, pain or uh, much preparation, at least if you have an idea, you can write it in the exam. For that reason, I took IPM and the silkworm study. Okay. Uh, honeybee like insect also, we discuss, no? In the beneficial insects. Write a brief account on the beneficial insect also, given sometimes. Small, small uh, Eight to lines, eight lines, eight lines. You can write it about each beneficial insect. Other if they ask one, they write down about the one beneficial insect. You can answer one. Okay. They have given social behavior of the honeybee. Ah, okay. as a ten marks. Social behavior of honeybee is very important. I will show the PDF form if it possible. And I'll explain in the next class. Social behavior. Tomorrow, no next class meets. Tomorrow, wow. I will. Tomorrow, I will continue. So that the three beneficial insects we will cover it. Um, IPM we have covered. So IPM beneficial insects. Um, whatever we have uh, done in the last classes, be perfect with them. The, the things which have, we have unable to do it also, you can leave it in the choice otherwise. If at all, we, uh, we will learn it. Actually, the things left over can be done in the four days practical also. No need to worry. Otherwise, if they... Again, uh, start the offline classes also, we can cover. If anything is left over, we can do it uh, there. Otherwise, whatever the classes they have mentioned, no, this next tomorrow class will complete one of the part. Again, in the next uh, two classes, I'll cover the very important topics. Then you prepare those only also, it will be beneficial. No doubts regarding the today's class, only IPM. Actually, visiting this silkworm unit will be more beneficial if you have nearby anywhere the silkworm dairying is done. Sharnagar, anyone is staying? No? Sharnagar, one unit is there. Vikarabad, one unit is there. Silkworm bearing units. In our college also, we have a special paper regarding this. So we take 
our children to these places usually. No doubts, ma'am. I'll end the class. Tomorrow I'll start. Continue. Okay. Actually, in group, uh, yeah, fortunately, group? I left the group, ma'am. That's why. Again, you told me mm -hmm. uh, to ask the doubts, uh, it is a necessary. By mistake, it has been done and uh, the problem. I want you number to be added. Actually, to make the admin uh, possible. Can you? Me? Me, you want to make admin? Me, um, and then, uh, none no jayma, no jayma, no. Oh, and the the settings march around the key to the Mirana Jay admin Leva, no, we put it at Lian, ma'am. Okay, yes, and I pay a no. Ah, okay, chase that. Chase that. Okay. <coughs> Can I end the meeting? Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am.